You might know me as Handsome Dick Manitoba, lead singer of The Dictators. Hold on, I gotta blow my nose. No, I haven't got checked. Don't come near me. They're gonna send me out to a friggin' island by myself. You might know me as Handsome Dick Manitoba, guy who had a radio show for 14 years, Little Stevens on the Ground Raw, Series 6 7 Radio. You might know me as Handsome Dick Manitoba, guy who ran a bar on Avenue B in my high for 20 years. I did some writing in my time, I did some public speaking in my time. You know me as Handsome Dick Manitoba for all those things. But tonight, I'm gonna be somebody different, at least name-wise. Are you ready for the next episode in the amazing adventures of the Chef of the Future? Dun, 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 dun. Now, I'm people. I'm going to get people's names next week because people are already donating so that I can do this and I can do whatever I want on YouTube and I can do whatever I want on my podcast. And people, you know, I had some big Manitoba. I've been entertaining people for 45 years. And people are throwing in a couple of bucks here, a couple of bucks there. And I'm going to name everybody. And it, I ask people for 50 cents a week for a year. 50 cents a week. 50 cents a week. It's half a slice of horrible pizza that doesn't even have cheese. It has oil cheese on it. Stop looking at me like that. I got two cats looking up at me because I got, I got anchovies over here. So I am the chef of the future. And each week or so, I will be making you something lovely to eat and share with your mate. Okay, you ready? Today, we are going to do a grilled Caesar salad. Now, I didn't invent it. I perfected that shit. I do a real good job. And where I got the original inspiration was when I went down to see my mom, rest her soul, down in Florida, Jew in Florida. Um, we took her out to our favorite steakhouse and a guy, we order a Caesar salad. And now usually, I order a Caesar salad, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I go to a, an Irish bar in Midtown, great bar, right by Central Park South. Me and Jake, we go up there, we watch the UFC fights. And, you know, you order a Caesar salad, and it's chopped up romaine lettuce with, like, goopy sauce. Can I have an extra anchovy? Oh, no, we don't have anchovies. Well, what's in the sauce? Like, there's probably not any anchovies in the sauce. Because I usually order a side portion of anchovies. Because I like anchovies. You don't like anchovies, there's something wrong with you. So that's what it usually is. It's usually occasionally good, most of the time crap. So this guy comes rolling down the aisle in the restaurant I took my mom to with a, a cart. And a cart had each cart, each, in the cart was a, a bunch of little jars of many different condiments to make a fresh homemade Caesar salad. On top of that, I'm going to do something instead. I, you could put it in the oven. Okay, I prefer a cast iron pan, but I am actually going to read something to you about Caesar salad because they're one of the few lettuces. Where's my glasses? Don't, you, whoever wears reading glasses, don't you spend your life looking for them? I walk around sometimes 15, 20 minutes like this. I wonder where the hell my reading glasses are. Where's my reading glasses? I spend my life. I buy like nine pairs at a time. I want to read this to you. I think it's very educational. Because I'd be into some education. You ready? Unlike most lettuces, or plural, lettuce, it <laughs> this lettuce is tolerant of heat. Although it's low in fiber, it's high in minerals, such as calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and potassium. It's naturally low in sodium. Plus, romaine lettuce is packed with vitamin C, vitamin K, and folate. It's a good source of beta carotene, which converts into vitamin A in the body. Let's get started. Okay, what we're gonna do, and what you might ask, look, the thing is, this is punk rock. This is DIY, this is do it yourself. So it might not sound the greatest, it might not look the greatest. I had nobody editing, nobody helping me. I try to get the angle of my cell phone. This is my cell phone doing this. So I'm gonna put stuff up in your face so you can see what I'm talking about. And why is this thing already? I just took these new glasses out. Get this. These are great. And why are they great? They don't hold a lot. But I used to, what I used to do was take this out and just like pour it all over whatever I was using it. 
the, anywhere in the pan, and make it a salad. And I, I used like a half a gallon every time I used it. It's healthy for you for olive oil. But 84,000 calories of fat is not. I don't give a care how good the fat is. You, you eat, you're going to eat, you know. An avocado is healthy for you. Eat 30 avocados. It's a lot of fat, a lot of calories. This thing, it pours out. See that spout? It pours out tiny. It's great. Total control. You could put a tablespoon in a big pan. Let's get started. I'm going to do it on a high flame. Get the high flame going and show you my ingredients. Little hot sauce. I hate Tabasco, hate Tabasco, hate Tabasco. I like Frank's Red Hot. It's like a vinegary hot. It's hot, but it's not very hot. I use spicy brown mustard. I bought French's because it was on sale. I, they, the classics tell you to use Dijon. Dijon mustard. I don't want to use Dijon. I don't want to use French mustard. I don't want wine in my mustard. As a matter of fact, the French language always freaked me out because I, I grew up like Spanish, Spanish. Grew up, went to Spain, grew up and talking to Spanish people, learning a language. I love Spanish language. I love Spanish culture. I love Spanish girls. I love the way Spanish women look. Men is so hot. And Spanish women love men. They love men. And that's a big general statement. But that's my life experience. So... When I was in school and they were teaching us about books and stuff like that, which I don't like very much, and poetry, which I don't like very much, all I could remember is being obsessed with this guy's name, this French guy's name. You know what it was? <laughs> Guy de Maupassant. Do you know Guy de Maupassant, the writer? I love Guy de Maupassant. Okay, I'm done with that. I have a little red wine vinegar, a splash of that. You have to shake this up before you throw a few drops of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Uh, I think people in Europe call it Worcester sauce. But anyway, it's like 30 ingredients in it, so you got to shake it up. I have les oof. <laughs> I have a tablespoon of chopped up garlic. Shut up. I'm talking to my cat. I'm talking to my son. <laughs> Talk to my cats and my son the same way. Now, uh, what's his name? We got in trouble. Uh, I used to love that guy, man. I mean, I still do love him. He never did nothing to me. But uh, what's his name, Jake? My friend, the chef, the famous chef, got in trouble. Mario, I'm sorry, Mario Batali. He was always nice to me, always loving to me, and, and wonderful to me. And he got in a lot of trouble. I, I got nothing to say about that. But I remember him saying that Reggiano Parmesan is the Rolls Royce of cheeses. So we're going to put a little of that in there. Some people just put Parmesan in. But, I, but that's sort of a sweet, on the sweet side of cheeses. And Pecorino Romano, even though it's in... Key foods, see? <laughs> I can't get afford. Um, I mix both because one's sweet and one's got a little, you know, a little kick to it. A little kick from the sheep. Sheep kick. What else do we need here? Um, and here's the thing you have to have croutons. Don't buy them. They have like like MSG in them and shit. Just don't buy them. You know what you do? Take any bread. I have like 12 grain healthy bread. You cut off all force tides. You chop it up into little squares. You put it in the oven for 10 minutes at 350 degrees. And you have croutons. And if you want to put spices on them, whatever spices you like, go ahead. Be my guest. So I think that's about it. And this pan is way hot enough. And we are going to put on some... Put in some olive oil. Acete to my Spanish friends. Acete de olive. And where's my lettuce? It's good. Let's cook a meal without the main dish. Where's my friggin' lettuce? I bet you the cats pulled it off. Say, where's, <laughs> where's my lettuce? Oh, shucks. You know something, ladies and gentlemen? When you get older, I want to tell you something. 
you will remember things. Like I gotta remember, I gotta remember to take that paper with me out of the house. You'll remember it, even when you get older. The problem with getting older is you'll leave it on the bed. You'll put it on the bed and say, okay, there it is. I remember it, but you won't take it. And then you get out of the house and goes, I remembered it, but then I forgot it. That's part of getting older. Okay, so we're gonna take this romaine stalk. Let's roll it around in the, in the earl for a while. Don't worry about my hands because I wash them at least once a week. In this pandemic, I wash my hands once a week. So you have nothing to worry about if you eat in my house. So I'm just gonna roll it around and, you know, I don't have a lot of olive oil. I might, with all that, that might be a teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half. And what I'm gonna do is take, okay, I'm gonna take this, which I love. Now, I'm not gonna to cook too long here. Um, why? Because as my son taught me, I swear, I hope that's, that's like one of the things, right? A leaky nose. <laughs> a leak. I'm cooking food with a leaky nose. So what he taught me is, Richard, I mean, Dad, people don't wanna watch you cook for 50 minutes. You know, five to 10 minutes tops. So I gotta get out of here. I gotta, this is not the dictator show. This is not the Handsome Dick Manitoba punk rock cabaret show, which I will be doing with a couple of people backing me up, singing, playing guitar, and me telling stories. Okay, so what we're doing is, you get the idea, right? Let me get my, you gotta get these gloves, man. These are the best gloves. These are like, you'll never burn yourself. Like this pan is super hot. You see? And you, and you just turn it, you turn it, you flip it a bunch of times, okay? So I would cook it a little bit more until it got like brown, 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 you know what I mean? So I'm taking it out for time's sake. And then we're doing one of my favorite words. I've always wanted to say this word, and now we're going to plate it. Look, it's plated. Now let's quickly... Make the dressing. I hope you can see me. Can you see me here? Well, just look. I'll show you what I'm doing. I actually am going to start with the egg. And what you have to do with an egg, hold on. You have to get the egg yolk. The way to get an egg yolk is just let that white gooey stuff slip out. I didn't do this one too good, but I will make it work out. Okay, you're supposed to just actually balance it back and forth between eggshell halves. I didn't break the egg properly, but I'm letting all the goopy stuff fall out, and then I let the yolk come in. Okay, so like when I say, try to break it in half and just flip it back and forth until the yolk stands along. Okay, here we go. A splash of red wine vinegar. A few splashes. A teaspoon or less. Very sexual, wasn't it? Okay. You know, you don't want to. You don't want to really taste the mustard, but it's, you taste it to the fact that well, this might be some mustard in there. I like hot, so I put more than a few drops. Lee and parents, do not put too much. Just tap it a few times. That's good. Don't forget. Oh, that is your garlic. Did I get everything? No, we're gonna get the cheese. No, we're gonna put the cheese on there. Not yet, not yet. So now what you're gonna do is whisk Olive oil in there. How much? You just gotta like put your pinky in there and figure it out. That's great. That, that little thing is so good, I friggin' ran out of olive oil. Okay, so we'll just do this very slowly. Okay.
Okay, that's enough. You, you know, it's greasy, it's olive oily. And then, this is my favorite. Now, everyone has their own way of doing this. And I clearly have mine. I either leave whole anchovies or I chop them into chunks. Today, I chop them into chunks. And here's what I do that nobody else does. I take some of the oil that came in the can of anchovies and I pour that in too. Maybe about a teaspoon, okay? Teaspoon of anchovy oil. If you want, like I said, you can leave anchovies whole or chop them up. Now, let's see how it is. It's nice, actually, I, I didn't listen to myself. There's too much goddamn mustard in there. You have to put like a less than a teaspoon. I think I put more than a teaspoon. So I'm gonna water it down with a little more olive oil. And now we gotta get some lemon. Lemon. If you have a lemon, and it's, if you have a lemon and it's too hard, just roll it around, you know, roll it around. Okay, cut it in half. It's the best thing. Don't buy those fancy eight, nine, ten, twelve dollar. I bought these fancy lemons. Just get one of these things that you you make for fresh tea. I never drink fresh tea ever in my life. But if you squeeze juice of a lemon in here, oh, you'll never get a pit. The thing, the holes are so small. I wonder if I should put more than half. Oh, one slipped in. God damn it. You know what they, you know what they call that? When you say no lemons, pits will come in and a lemon pit comes in? They call that life. Okay. So you know what I'm saying? When I do this, DIY, punk rock, I'm not like, like oh yeah, punk rock, we have to in October. I'm doing this, it is DIY. I'm doing it in my house, I'm trying to figure out. Well, that's good. I'm trying to figure out a way to make a buck by entertaining people. Folks, I don't ask you for money to give me money. I'm saying, would you contribute money to seeing me play live? You have. Would you contribute money to buying Sirius Radio? Because I was on the station and I did a great job. You have. Would you contribute money to buy a drink in my bar? Because you have. So what I do is entertainment. If you're entertained, if you're getting some value, throw me something. 50 cents a week, right? It's $24 a year. A thousand of my best, 2,000 dictators, man. 50 cents a week. That's my goal. Okay. So this is just about done. It's a beautiful yellow color, my least favorite color in the universe. And now we're gonna throw in some Romano cheese, but almost done. I just like a nice handful all over my shirt, all over the floor. And then we throw in some of that Mario Vitale cheese, Rolls Royce of cheeses. Let's mix that up really good. Okay, now here's the trick, ladies and gentlemen. Here's how I do it. If you just put it on the top and turn it over and put it on the top, the first few leaves you eat are gonna be great. And then you get to the middle and you're gonna be eating lettuce with oil. So what you do, you take a teaspoon and before you put anything on top, you lift up lettuce. You don't have to put a whole teaspoon. You just put some in and mush it, you know, mush it around with the teaspoon. See what I'm saying? I'm putting some in the middle. I hope you can see what I'm doing. You kind of want a little bit all over the place. Jesus, you can see what I'm doing, right? I'll show it to you anyway. See what I'm just saying? It's just like, everywhere you look, there should be a drop. You don't want to soak it but you want to get some in the middle, so everybody you take. And you know, I got a lot left over. I can make, I can make this for two, three days. We got to buy it. Okay, 
So look, it's grilled. See when you open it up, you'll always get a little flavor of sauce. And then I like to take these and just put them all over because I'm a slob and I like to cook in a slob slobbingly manner. The chef for the future. Grilled Caesar's salad. Don't forget to watch the next episode in the amazing adventures of the chef of the future. And don't forget to go to patreon.com slash Anton Dick Manitoba. P-A-T-P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Hanson Dick Manitoba. Make a donation. Don't forget to go to PayPal. H-D-M-K-O-M. H-D-M like Hanson Dick Manitoba. K-O-M like King of Men at gmail.com. And don't forget to go to Venmo. Richard dash Manitoba. I thank you all for tuning in. I hope you make this. I hope you enjoy it. You might want to add some... No, don't, don't add nothing. Whatever. It's good. One thing I want to say. I want to say a, uh, something real nice about a guy that passed away from the neighborhood. We here in the East Village, people think New York is 8 million people. It is. But there are little neighborhoods. And the East Village has been a tight neighborhood for endless decades. And, you know, in the time I was growing up, not the early time, but the later time, like the 90s, 2000, maybe the mid to late 80s, there was a guy named Steve Poss, P-O-S-S. -S. I hung out, he hung out, he was like, just the guy who loved to hang out, loved to party and loved to laugh. He was hysterical, he was funny, and he was a great kid. He passed away recently. And it was really sad to lose that type of humor, that type of fun, that type of party animal. It was really sad after decades of having him around. So I just wanted to say, rest peacefully, my friend. We're gonna miss you a lot, Steve Potts. Good night, everyone.